<laughs> Whoever knew that the world of laptop repair could be described as an arms race? An arms race? Yes. Well, it literally is kind of an arms race. I've got some Surface Book laptops here from Microsoft. These are more or less first generation devices. This one is like the better, just, you know, GPU keyboard. This one's the worst GPU keyboard, but they're not bad hardware. I mean, think about it. Microsoft reimagined the laptop form factor and actually came up with something reasonable. This is, well, this is the Surface Book that came later. There was the Surface Pro 3. It took them three generations to really do their vision and don't, you know, if you know me, you know, I don't really care for Windows. Uh, by the way, I'm an Arch user. But um, this is a good form factor. I really spent a lot of time and a lot of compiling and a lot of heartache getting Linux to run reasonably okay on the Surface Pro 3. And some of that code is still out there. Uh, some of that code is just me being a gopher for much smarter people so they could figure it out and do the hardware and this kind of thing. But these Surface Books are basically end of life according to Microsoft. You know, they, uh, these, both of these had a three year warranty. They're just barely out of their three year warranty because they came sort of at the end of the life cycle. And if you notice, the, uh, <laughs> the LCD screen is very near to breaking. It's, it's bulging, it's, it's popped out. And uh, this is not a good situation for you to be in with a, with a laptop. Now, these laptops weren't meant to be repaired by the user, and it's a, it is a little bit of an arms race. There's a thing that we have in America right now called the right to repair. The Europeans are in a little bit better situation because uh, they have a little bit better consumer protection laws, in my opinion, than America currently, which is a little disconcerting. The problem is really a design flaw with these laptops. If you really, if you really want to get down to it, so it's still running. It still has, the battery is still batterying, but the main battery is actually in the keyboard. And you can kind of see the keyboard is sort of bulging and the screen is kind of bulging. You know, it's definitely not, not a good situation as far as the battery goes. The problem is that lithium ion batteries need to be exercised or they wear out prematurely. And these are three years old, so it's not like as if they wore out prematurely. But because these Surface laptops didn't really get much exercise, the batteries have swollen. The batteries are breaking down chemically. In this state, these laptops are a fire hazard. The battery can have a runaway thermal situation. It can have a runaway any, any kind of a situation. The, uh, you know, the battery pack itself will be breached to the atmosphere. Like you can get oxygen, then the whole thing catches on fire. So not a great situation. And there's two battery packs, like I said, one in the keyboard, one in the, in the screen. So if you're gonna undertake these repairs, you need to make sure that you do it outside, preferably on a picnic table or something like that. So if you do have catastrophic thermal runaway with your laptop batteries, uh, or something goes horribly wrong, it's not gonna burn your house down. You know, that said, make sure that you know what you're doing. I'm not recommending you do this. All the legal disclaimers apply. You're on your own, but Pretty much anybody can do this. Just take the appropriate safety precautions and bear in mind that there's a lot of chemical energy stored in the batteries in these laptops. And if you are gonna to try to do user replacement, um, you should keep that in mind. I don't think that they're dangerous. So you've seen Apple say, oh, you know, people can kill themselves with these things. You'd have to be really dumb for that to happen. I mean, people kill themselves with toothbrushes every year because there's just, you know, 7 billion people on planet Earth. It's, it's gonna happen, statistically. So I'm not saying it's impossible to kill yourself with one of these, but you gotta be careful. I mean, just, just be a reasonable human being. Um, and so it is a little bit of an arms race because, you know, if you make it too easy to repair these devices, people won't buy new ones. And that's in the company's, not in the company's best interests. And it's a little bit of a question is like, where do you draw the line? Like, okay, it's easier to manufacture and assemble and we can have a lower price if we make the repairability a little bit harder. But at what point does the company intentionally make things impossible to repair? I mean, we see Apple deliberately abusing their position to prevent repaired parts that have gone out and come back from coming in. So like if these were Apple laptops, if I were to say send the keyboard overseas to be repaired and that keyboard comes back as a repaired Apple keyboard, 
um, Apple might seize that. My, Apple might have Customs and Border Patrol seize that and say, oh, that's a counterfeit product. And it's like, well, but it's a repaired original product. It's not counterfeit. It's, it's definitely an original product. It's just someone has repaired it. So the batteries in these laptops are actually fairly standard and you can order them on eBay and replacing them is pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna show you how. This Surface laptop has both a bad keyboard, the, bad, the keyboard is swelling, as well as a bad uh, battery in the screen. This Surface has an older style keyboard. The battery in the keyboard's probably okay, but the battery in the screen has had it. And you know, when you pick up replacement batteries for these on eBay or somewhere else, all the standard rules apply. You know, some sellers on eBay are selling you the cheapest battery possible. It's not gonna last as long. Check the ratings, check the seller. There are people that do this professionally and have a lot more content on repair, like Lewis Rossman. You should definitely check him out if you're not, you know, in the know or doing these kinds of things or doing that. He does a lot of repair of laptops, has a great YouTube channel, walks you through how to do it. It's pretty straightforward. But when you order those, you know, from eBay, usually they come with tools to help you separate the screen and the laptop and, you know, help get it unglued because really all you gotta do is heat up the glue and loosen it. So the only tool you really need that most of those battery kits, the battery replacement kits don't come with is a heat gun. Now you can get better tools. Like if you want to get the iFixit toolkit that, you know, cause iFixit sponsors everybody, not sponsored by iFixit, but uh, they have a pretty good repair kit that you can get that has more tools for sort of working the glue loose so that you can take the stuff apart without breaking it. You might be wondering, it's like, wait, it's a design flaw. Yeah, the battery firmware in these laptops should be smart enough to know, hey, this battery hasn't been exercised in a little while. I'm gonna just drain it down to 86% and then let it charge up again. There are other laptops that do that. Apple laptops do that, but uh, not all of them. Not all Apple laptops do that, which shows you that Apple is thinking about that. Like, hmm, we could make the battery last longer or we could have people buy new laptops. So things have been interesting in the battery firmware game if you know, you're know you downloading battery firmware and debugging it and disassembling it and doing stuff, some versions of it, will actually recondition the battery a little more aggressively than other versions. And it seems like newer versions don't really as aggressively recondition the battery. It's like, this battery's higher quality. No, still gonna need somebody like Lewis Rossman to replace it for you if you don't feel comfortable doing that yourself. So I highly, highly recommend the iFixit guide for the, this disassembly and this guide. So think of this video as like a follow along guide for that video. But in order to get the battery out, you have to go under the motherboard. This is more of that, you know, arms race. Microsoft could have designed it so that you could just pop the battery out from here, which by the way, it's glued. You're gonna have to use your heat gun. We'll get to that. Uh, but we gotta sort of finagle it to get it out of here. Whereas if they designed this a little bit differently, we would have been able to just pop the battery out from here without further disassembly. As it is, and as you see in the iFixit guide, 18 screws, you can take out 18 screws. And uh, way more chance of accidentally destroying something. All right, that's enough yik yakking. Let's get on with it. The batteries in the screens are actually quite small. There's really not much to them. Replacing them is pretty easy. Minimally, you need a spudger tool. You know, just a little bit of thin plastic to get under the edge and a source of heat. Now you gotta be careful with the heat gun. It's actually not as good as uh, a sandbag or a gel pack or something that you heat up in the microwave and use that to kind of, you know, help heat everything slowly. Cause this gets stuff hot fast. So I recommend low. Don't be tempted to start with the cutouts for the speakers because they'll break. And you can't start from the back because I mean, this metal is an effective conductor of heat. So you want the temperature of the whole thing to come up a little bit. And remember, you can't really turn it off because you can't remove the battery and the battery's in a thermal runaway state. So it could catch on fire. What you don't see off camera is a giant pile of fire extinguishers, which are probably not even the right kind of fire extinguisher. Now with the heat gun, you can really see we're getting some separation and that's good. That's, we're sort of breaking the seal around the display. And it's very important that you only do this when the whole thing is, you know, warm. When it cools off, don't be afraid to, you know, help it heat back up. You'd be surprised what a difference just 10 degrees will make. But with a heat source this intense, you gotta keep it moving. Don't ever stay in one spot. I can't get it to eject from the keyboard, which is bad. 
But at least with the work we've done so far, the display's not broken yet. Small favors, right? This is what we want. You know, nice separation, much easier to work on, but this one won't do it for some reason. Definitely do not do it this way. You can use a paperclip to force eject the keyboard, but eh. So that is what we're working with in here. <laughs> Truly, this is a marvel of engineering, cramming the entire computer in here and then having a PCI Express by four linked to the GPU in the keyboard. But this, this is bad. This, this part of your laptop, like all parts of your laptop, can't wait to be on fire. So this is the arms race that I'm talking about. You know, once you know what you're doing, you get the spudger tool, you can kind of repair some of the glue around like the cameras and stuff so you don't smash the adhesive back into the camera. It is possible to use or replace all this, but it's an arms race. If you're Apple or Microsoft and you don't want somebody to repair these or you have some nonsensical line about product liability because somebody's gonna stab this and then, you know, blind themselves by the, you know, lithium ion hellfire that comes out of the battery. Are you, you know, liable from a product management standpoint or whatever? And so it becomes an arms race and okay, let's just fill the whole thing with resin and then nobody will ever want to repair it because as far as this goes, this repair really wasn't too bad. I mean, it would be nice if it could be done with screws, but this isn't bad. Now I got the cheapest, crappiest battery that I possibly could on eBay just to see how it would go. Definitely crap. See here, it says manufactured in 2016, but it also has a 2020 sticker showing that it's been tested in 2020, but this battery has been in storage for the better part of four years. Now the way that lithium ion batteries are stored, they're stored at uh, sort of a half charge or like a 40% charge and they'll slowly lose charge over time. But these things aren't really super dangerous unless they're fully charged or fully discharged. So even though this battery is from 2016, that's not great. I would prefer a more recently manufactured battery, but it was super cheap. It was like $22. The battery does have a little bit of packing material, although not much. It's really not packing material, it's so that the auto assembly machine can assemble it. So I've got a couple of screws to remove and then we're off to the races. It took ages. When you're taking out the keyboard connector, be extra, 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 extra careful. You should take out this little piece of plastic on the front just to make sure that it's coming okay. Or this little piece of metal, it's like a little spacer thing. It's just glued in. It's like right on the bottom edge of the connector. It's where the keyboard plugs into the screen. I had some trouble with mine. For the battery removal, it's very important that you don't use anything metal. You might actually accidentally puncture the battery. And that would be extremely bad. Hey. One down and one to go. Can confirm, horrible unnecessary black glue. But at least we're lucky it's not epoxy. I really need a plastic butter knife or an old credit card. Now with careful use of a heat gun from below, we have freed the old battery, the old insanely dangerous battery. And there's still plenty of adhesive. I mean, look at that, it's just, ugh. And now you begin the incredibly tedious process of reassembly. That's one of the other differentiators of uh, the good the good battery kits versus the bad battery kits. Like the more expensive battery replacement kits for the Surface Book will actually come with a replacement adhesive. But if you're really careful when you take it out and you have a you have a pretty long spudger, you'll be all right. 
you don't have to use the same adhesive. You can use just a thin foamy double stick tape. That does work fine too. It doesn't stick quite as good. But if you are gonna reuse the foam, definitely take the extra time to use an X-Acto knife or something and cut out all the little gnarly things and make sure that there's nothing blocking any of your cameras. If you get the little gnarly knots out, it'll set pretty flat. Now one thing I ran into that was not in the iFixit guide are the wires for the CPU fan and the wires for the little, you know, nut and all muscle wire release mechanism for the clamps. These little multicolored wires on the side, they control this wire that com like, will squeeze and compress and pull the spring and release the mechanism. The problem is these don't pull out this way, they go down, so it snaps in from the top. So I would recommend unhooking them from this side or this side if your battery is as swollen as mine. Now the iFixit guide, they just take the screws loose enough so that they can just sort of lift up on this gently and slide the battery out. But, you know, Bozo the Clown's gonna be handing this out to very naughty children like, cause it's blown up like a balloon and mine didn't have enough slack on the wires to be able to do that. And so I, I was a little rough with these wires and I hope this thing still releases for me when I'm done. Of course it was messed up to begin with on this particular screen. You know, remember it wouldn't unclamp. So mm, that ship may have already sailed. All right, now before we press the glue back together, we sort of lovingly and gingerly make sure this darn thing's gonna wake up. Hey. That looks promising. Let's see if we still got charge functionality. Looks like we do. Nice. Just as a matter of gluing it back together, I like to heat it up a little bit. And that'll help the glue set a little bit better. Now I'm just reusing the glue, remember. <laughs> if you're a pro, you should probably re-glue it. Now we just sort of apply pressure and wait. Now this keyboard base, perfectly fine. Well, I don't know about fine, but it's not swelling. It's not blowing up like a balloon. This keyboard base, on the other hand, ooh, yeah, it's not looking too good either. And like the other one, sort of the same deal. Once you gotta start with your spudger, don't let it go. So as you're going, be very careful and definitely do not use a knife. You can see around how the front and bottom edges you're super close to the battery, and if you puncture the battery, it's gonna be really bad news. But like our other batteries, these batteries are super swollen. We can just disconnect it here. And pop in our replacement batteries. And just like the other ones, you know, we sort of gotta use a lot of, uh, a lot of heat from this side to get the battery glue undone. But beyond that, you know, we can see our, our GPUs in here. A relatively modest, you know, MX440, I think is what this is, or something, something pretty low end. That's it, that's it, that's it for the Surface Book. It's just glue. This one's a lot easier than the one in the screen, but from here, you just replace your battery, glue it back together, and then voila, you've got a Surface Book again. I'm little, this is level one, but just goes to show you, even if you're not iFixit, you can still fix stuff and get it done. And if not, you don't want to do it, you know, you gotta hire somebody like Lewis Rossman or whatever. If you've repaired something, show off in the forums, the level one forums. I'm Wendell up signing up, and I'll see you there. Yeah.